Considering that we have been talking about it a lot in our recent videos, we thought it would be only appropriate to maybe make a whole video out of the summer 2024 anime that we're going to be watching and maybe even reviewing for this channel. Obviously, since there's only so many hours in the day, we won't be able to review everything, and for the time being at least, we will limit it to two series per season. We will share more than two for this video, if only to give my personal recommendations for the season, and then afterwards, we can all share our own watch list in the comment section. So, with the temperatures rising, probably because of global warming, let's take a look at this channel's summer 2024 anime picks. <laughs> Well, may as well start off with the most obvious. Yep, this is one that's already been making the rounds, mostly because of this one dancing meme that was actually perpetuated by the creators themselves. More on that in a second, but yeah, my dear friend Nokotan is basically going to end up taking up Blue Archive's time slot, which works out good for us in terms of video production. Plus, after reviewing a fairly complicated show based on a mobile game that I've never played, I kind of just want to review an insane yet surreal anime, like the ones I used to watch back in some of my prime anime years like Cromarty High, Excel Saga, and of course Osmanga Dio. Uh, I wish I were a bird. And this show about a human and deer hybrid high school girl amongst a bunch of photorealistic deer at least sounds like it'll qualify as such. I'm also interested in the show because of its cast, most notably its leads. The titular Nokotan will be voiced by one of my personal favorites, Megumi Han, who not only has some insane range going from Kana Arima to freaking Gon, but I think she voiced one of the funniest pre-cure ever in Hime from Happy Discharge. <laughs> Yeah, give me the booty princess over the mean face any day of the week. Meanwhile, her co-star Torako is going to be voiced by Saki Fujita, who of course will eternally be known as the voice provider of Hatsune Miku, but for this channel, she also played another cure in Yukari from Kira Kira. Me personally though, I most associate her voice with her. <laughs> Which is appropriate, as based on the first few chapters of the original manga I've read, and of course the trailers themselves, she is clearly going to be the straight man to Nokotan's insane nonsense. In short, we're basically dealing with Ayano trying to keep track of Hime as she's tripping out on acid. If that doesn't excite you, I also don't know what will. And speaking of acid trips, the show's Twitter, along with posting the obvious ads for the show itself, also seems to really go out of its way to memify the show with this dance and just some pretty senseless little tweets. Normally, I would say this is kind of an overly desperate attempt to make the show go viral, which they kind of are, but it is also clear that they're really damn passionate about this show, so I can't really criticize it too much. It's certainly not going to stop me from wanting to join this herd when it comes out next week. From one popular IP to another, or at least somewhat popular these days, we've got the Sudoku Squad Isekai. Though, unlike a certain season pass and loot box dependent crap game, this show actually looks really promising. For one thing, these designs look infinitely better than these overly realistic and frankly ugly models. Yes, obviously Harley Quinn's OG design will always be the best, but this isn't a bad compromise either. Moreover, the idea of these insane DC villains isekai is a much more interesting setting than having it be Metropolis or Gotham for the umpteenth time. Again, this just feels like a fun time like Nokotan with alternate versions of characters that I used to grow up watching. Like yeah, this version of Clayface does feel a little smoother and more criminally than the character I remember from the animated series. That and, well, he does seem a little more Luluchi. But yeah, this show also has a fairly star-studded cast, like whoever's the genius who said that John Cena should be voiced by Dio deserves an award. And while Harley's VA is still relatively new, I still really liked her as Ushio in Summertime Rendering. All that said though, yeah, we're probably not going to be covering this series. I mean, for one thing, I can already feel WB breathing down our necks with their copyright bots, and two, it is going to air on Saturdays and we have our stuff to review that day. Still, I think it should at least be pretty good, as even the second movie proved that these characters can work when they're in the right hands. And hey, even if it's not, at least Truck-kun can be the hero that we all don't deserve.
Yeah, I might have a thing for robots. Grindizer U is going to be another adaptation in a long line of Golden Guy Super Robot manga. It's going to be developed by his dynamic flying company and produced by studio Gaina, not to be confused with their actual daddy in Gainax. Yeah, if Trigger's the bastard child of the company behind Gren Lagan, then this studio is their legal child. And just from the trailers, it does actually look amazing and even on par with the end of Evangelion in production, especially for a TV series. That said, yeah, this is another one I'm just gonna watch and not cover. Again, it's a Saturday anime, plus I'm just not a big fan of UFO robot Grandizer, at least compared to the Bajingers. Don't get me wrong, it's a great looking robot, but the OGs just have a bit more of an iconic design in my mind at least. Still, I am more than willing to get interested in this robot, and the show is going to be directed by the same guy who did Gundam Seed, and the head writer did Kogia, so yeah, this is probably going to be one of the most sunrise -y shows without actually being Sunrise. Well, at least those guys from Shocker finally found some work after their organization foreclosed. The last series we'll take a look at today will of course also be our other review subject going into the summer. The Magical Girl and Evil Lieutenant used to be Arch Nemesis, and yeah, believe it or not, that's not the title of a light novel, it's actually just a regular manga. Still, just by that, you can pretty much tell what it's all about. It's a rom-com in which a pretty boy Evil Lieutenant falls in love with a deadpan magical girl. It's your basic Romeo and Juliet Juliet setup, but it is done with a couple of my favorite genres that we just so happen to cover on this channel, Tokusatsu and Magical Girls. Not to mention, I mean, just look at this animation. It's gonna be produced by Studio Bones, so that's already gonna give you an idea of what sort of quality to expect. And while I'm mostly unfamiliar with the director and writer of this show, I've actually seen another work of the original mangaka Kokoa Fujiwara, a similar rom-com Inuboku Secret Service, which I remember being pretty hilarious, even if it seemed to be about a little girl being hooked up with an older dude, which this show is also kind of doing, but hey, at least they're acknowledging that this relationship is kind of off kilter. Though, on the subject of that mangaka, tragically, this series was her last work ever, as she passed away back in 2015 at the age of 31, which, yeah, that is just too early and too sad. I mean, yeah, Inuboku is her only other work that I'm familiar with, and from what I've heard, the manga kind of goes off the rails later, but regardless, I do think she had a great sense of humor. Thus, I am also curious how this anime is going to handle this adaptation, as the manga ended prematurely with only three volumes. Regardless though, I will mostly just go into this series expecting a cute little rom-com with a really solid cast. I mean, the titular Magical Girl and Lieutenant will be voiced by Mai Nakahara and Yuki Ono respectively. The former is probably best known for playing the girl with the absurdly huge machete, Renner Ryuku, and CL from Honkai Impact. Meanwhile, the latter played Josuke Higashikata, Sora from Sword Eyes, and most appropriately for this role, Ashia from The Devil is a Part-Timer. Though this time, instead of being gay for his king, he's obsessed with Cure Oasis, which hey, again, line dude. But yeah, I don't see a lot of people actually talking about this show, so maybe it'll be like the dark horse of this season. We'll see when it comes out on July 9th. Man, hey, whatever the case, at least this magical girl will have a little more dignity than whatever this is. But why? Why would you do that? Why would you do any of that? And that's, at least for now, our current watch list for the upcoming season of anime, and what we'll cover for this channel, but still, what are y'all gonna watch? Maybe there's some sequels you wanna check out, or maybe a show about plump elves who, uh, yeah, still look really hot, so maybe I'll actually check that out too. But, uh, yeah, feel free to share your watch list in the comment section below, and until next time, though, farewell for now, my friends, and, uh, what's that sound? Oh, crap. <laughs>